Hi, welcome to the first anti-sex YouTube channel. That's right. I don't endorse things like sex. <sighs> Gross, am I right? What I like to do instead is go to the gym, grind, work, make money. Ever heard of it? Probably not, because you're too busy porking. <laughs> this is the mentality we're gonna be talking about today. Those who frequent the subreddit r slash semen retention. This is a nofap adjacent subreddit, but make no mistake, you'll be instantly banned from r slash semen retention if you post anything nofap related. From what I've been able to gather, the key difference between semen retention and nofap is that nofap is about in demonizing porn and sex workers, and semen retention is just about never coming. I guess there's some sort of of weird rivalry here. The semen retention ideology does let you have sex, but you still can't come. That sounds like it sucks. <laughs> and the biggest reason that you can't come is because within your seed lies your manly essence. And you obviously can't lose that. You might be asking yourself, does this apply to women, right? Women can still orgasm. Did they lose anything from doing that? No, they don't. This is semen retention. Okay, not going shopping or whatever it is that women are into. This one's for the boys. According to the dudes on the subreddit, if you have cum in your balls, you can basically do anything. Lift bigger weights, have more confidence, do better at your job, talk to more women, but you can't have normal sex with them. Um, what I find really funny about this community is how much overlap there is with being like an alpha bro. Like trying to portray yourself as this alpha male giga chad leader while also posting things like this. Food high in fat make you horny? At loads of meat and that night I had a wet dream and felt horny AF the whole day. Who talks like this about anything else? <laughs> but first, here's a word from today's video sponsor, Dr. Squatch. Do you know what's in your soap? Chances are, if you're not using Dr. Squatch, it's a bunch of ingredients you can't pronounce. Dr. Squatch is aiming to take your whole routine to the next level with soaps, deodorant, hair care, and more that are made with all natural ingredients made in the United States and smell incredible. If you look on the label of any Dr. Squatch product, you're gonna be able to actually pronounce the things that you see. So you know exactly what's going on your body and you know why it smells so damn good. Now compare that to the harsh chemicals, harmful synthetics, and other things that you might find in more generic body wash and hair care products. It's not even a contest. All Dr. Squatch products are at least 98% natural in origin, and they have an incredible lineup of all natural, fresh smelling soap that's gonna leave you feeling great and smelling great. They even have convenient subscription plans so you never run out of the soap that you need when you need it, as well as a 100% money back guarantee. If Dr. Squatch is not the best soap you've ever tried, they will send your money back, no questions asked. I've personally used Dr. Squatch since before they chose to sponsor me, and I do happen to have really sensitive skin, so it's great to know that they're a reliable brand for my skin type that's gonna keep me from breaking out or being red all day. Showering with Dr. Squatch is great because a lot of their soap has a grit to it, which is really great for exfoliating. So not only do they smell great, but they do wonders on your skin, keeping you feeling fresh fresh and smelling fresh. Of the soap that they sent me, I think the Wood Barrel Bourbon is my favorite. It's one that I've used before and has a really nice, really rich smell that just kind of fills the whole bathroom when you're using it, which I really appreciate. New customers to Dr. Squatch can get 20% off any order of $20 or more using my code DSQETHAN at checkout. Again, that's 20% off orders of $20 or more for new Dr. Squatch customers using my code DSQETHAN. And thank you so much to Dr. Squatch for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. Don't get it twisted. There's nothing wrong with not wanting to have sex. Being asexual is epic and cool. But these guys aren't ace. They literally want to have sex and they want to nut, but they force themselves not to. For what? <laughs> so they can lift heavier weights, mental sharpness, do a crossword, man, grow up. This subreddit gets more and more cult-like the more you read into it. And there are a lot of like very spiritual weirdos who like to talk about how your energy lives um, in your cum, which like, where does women's energy live? Eggs? In their, in their, in their little egg sacks? <laughs> but what I really don't understand is like, why, what, where do they think the cum is going? Like, does it like go back into your body and like, where do they go to your heart? Your brain? Fuck no fap, semen retention is the shit. So I had sex with this girl yesterday and the difference in the person that I am before and after sex is like day and night. My attitude, confidence, mental sharpness, body language, physical strength, everything is just perfect when I'm practicing semen retention and doing great in a long streak. And after orgasm, I lose all of these benefits. Because of sex, I now pretty much have brain fog and feel drained of all energy. 
all because of one single orgasm. If you want the full benefits, including sky-high confidence, not giving a fuck attitude, happiness, mental clarity, tons of energy, crazy memory. Yo, I've always wanted crazy memory. <laughs> According to Pythagoras, 6th century BCE, sex should be practiced in the winter, but not the summer, but was harmful to male health in every season because the loss of semen was dangerous. Yeah, I think I, I won't take sex advice from Pythagoras. You know, the triangle guy. You know, I like some of the Pythagorean theorems. But what the fuck does he know about nutting? Semen retention makes you bold. This is a post about a guy who started practicing semen retention and then mustered up the confidence to talk to a girl at his gym because he's been working out and feels more confident in his body. What does that have to do with having more come in you? Everything. Basically, I got rejected, but I feel great because I took action. It's like my feelings were bottled up and I managed to release them just by asking her out. At least I can move on now, but I know past me would have been mentally and probably physically destroyed from that news. I was a very weak guy. The first fucking response, never chase, be chosen, obviously. And then someone replied, women get chosen, men attract. What is the difference? <laughs> I think these guys got too much cum in them and I don't think they understand what the world is like. <laughs> I love when like alpha males say shit like, don't chase women. Cause I imagine the only way they know how to get women is like chasing them around a building like in Scooby-Doo. Boldness is a sign kidney weakness, and diminished vitality. So no, it won't make you bold. It does exactly the opposite. What do these people think organs do? Well, like, <laughs> the secret to getting all these women in the first place is retaining. Once you're past day 30, in my experience, they'll be throwing themselves at you. It's extremely culty whenever some, like, fad or trend has to keep telling you, like, no, man, you just gotta keep doing it. I know you're not getting the results you want now, but you just gotta keep doing it. Like, I promise, dude. Day 30? Day 90? Day 642, that's when the women start coming, man. And what past like a month of not coming can you really keep gaining? And how are other people gonna know? Or do you have like an aura around you like Dragon Ball? <laughs> Here's a post kind of laying out exactly what the benefits are to semen retention in a convenient list. Currently more than one month in. Here's what I noticed at first. Curious eyes. <laughs> I find myself looking at things and finding details that I never did before. It's like my eyes have a world of their own. What the fuck is that sentence even? That's not even an expression. <laughs> charisma. My charisma has improved as I have much stronger eye contact. Like I was wondering where the cum goes in your body to actually improve your performance or whatever, and I guess we figured it out. The cum goes to your eyes. Guy got cum eyes. More independent. I feel a lot more independent. Like I can do anything. Yeah, ever try to do something with empty balls? Yeah, try it. You won't, you can't. <laughs> like it's gotta be all in their heads, right? Like they post on Reddit and all these guys are like, yo, me too. And then the guy that reads that, who is just starting his like no cum journey will eventually start thinking he actually feels the thing that he read, even though it's like, does it make any sense? And then they make backsliding feel like something that's so dangerous and, you know, the temptation, the urges will destroy you. Like, it's literally, it literally plays out like a cult. It's weird. This comment was posted listing the different changes that this person's had in their character since starting semen retention. No more social anxiety. It's gone. Dramatically improved communication slash jokes slash storytelling. Fuck, is that really all it takes? I could be so much funnier, sharper memory. That's the consistent through line here is that you can have better memory if you just never nut, which I wouldn't make that trade. I don't think that's worth it. Increased respect from strangers at the gym and increased respect from old friends. <laughs> How? <laughs> How do they know? The only way they would know that you're doing semen retention is if you told them. <laughs> more stoic. <laughs> That's like the opposite of being more charismatic. Like you're just like neutral all the time. Increased attention from women. That's something that a lot of these semen retention guys will talk about is how much attention that women just happen to give them when they're on their semen retention streak. And if you ask me, they're just looking too deep into interactions that would have happened anyway. No more simping, that's the best one. I don't even like women anymore. I stopped coming and I realized, women, <laughs> they be shopping. Masculinity as we see it in media especially tends to be self-sacrificial. The idea of an honorable man will give up something or lose a part of himself to protect his family or protect others. And we see that as an inherently masculine and honorable thing to do. I think these men 
are so deeply insecure, on top of feeling the shame that many people of all genders do when they masturbate, as a result of a lack of education, stigmatization from society, and religious influence, they feel the need to mythologize their inability to masturbate without shame rather than confronting it and coping with it. What we're looking at is a coping mechanism. Their perception and their outward expression of their gender identity is so deeply rooted in their ability to choose not to come, which is a weird sentence to say. And unfortunately, as a result of the society that we live in, the shame that a lot of people do feel after masturbation is also part of it. But it's something that you can overcome. Get it? When I practice semen retention, I find myself trying to be better. Here are some of the things I've noticed happened to me. Making a budget and sticking to it. Interest in reading again. Going to sleep and waking up on time. Finishing my tasks for the day. These are all things that everybody wants to do. Ask like any grown adult, hey, when was the last time you read a book? And they'll probably say, you know, I like reading, but I just wish I had more time to do it. I don't have the attention span. I don't have enough time in the day. And it's not because they just masturbate all day. Like, there's nothing wrong with self-improvement. These are all good things to do, all, like, universally. But it's not good to purposefully suppress a normal and healthy bodily function that you want to do. It's like self-flagellation, and it's very strange and ultimately unhealthy. What a lot of the attitudes I see on the semen retention subreddit remind me of are my experiences with eating disorders. The relationship of reward and punishment, of wanting to overcompensate when you've made a mistake, the overwhelming shame that you feel when you relapse on something. And trust me, none of these behaviors or thought processes lead to healthy outcomes. Cultivate your divine energy. <laughs> you probably first found the path as a solution to a problem. You want to attract more women, get luckier, more money, or a clearer head. You want the superpowers. If you are in this mindset, you are still conditioned by a pleasuring feeling. Conditioned by pleasure? Really? Grow up. Yeah, no one does that. You feel intoxicated by the thought of attracting women simply by being in their presence. One of the more common fantasies. Finding a partner? <laughs> Typical fantasy. It's true, but if you do it for attention, you're going to condition yourself to retain for female attention, which is like building a home for yourself, but only letting your guests stay in it because they really like the house you've built. That's a fucking weird analogy. Don't think of yourself as a retainer. Think of yourself as simply cultivating your divine energy. Completely remove any connotations from sex from this energy. This is literally your life force. This is not a substance of pleasure. Life force? If cum is your life force, what is a woman's life force? What if you've had a vasectomy and you don't have sperms in your cum? Does that make it different? Are you only like half alive? I don't know if this makes a lot of sense. This idea of cum being like divine energy reminds me of like puritanical attitudes towards sex and women. Like a man's seed is the most important thing. A man spreads his seed to his woman and she does the rest. <laughs> Imagine you are a cup and the goal is to keep that cup filled with sweet, sweet divine energy. That energy is used for all bodily processes, including digestion. It doesn't have a name though, or a substance because it's not real. A lot of semen retentionists will claim that they can transmute their energy that would otherwise be going into creating semen into other things like um, workouts, uh, creative projects, love. <laughs> Imagine, I can't love unless I stop coming. <laughs> One thing I've noticed in my journey is I do see women as beautiful, but in a different sense than when I was PMOing every day. I guess uh, pretty much jacking off. Before they were just objects, meat snacks. Okay. You shouldn't need to like stop masturbating to see women as people. But I guess if you do now, then that's cool. Ultimately, I just think that the semen retention subreddit is really funny. But I also think a lot of the attitudes they have about restricting yourself so severely in order to have some sort of benefit that is a little ambiguous and different to everybody, I think that's really unhealthy. If you applied that thinking to eating, bathing, friendships, pretty much anything you do on a day-to-day -day basis, I think a lot of people would recognize how unhealthy it is. But because sex is so stigmatized, it creates a lot of room for people to inject themselves and say, hey, you feel a little bad when you think about sex sometimes. It's because it's bad for you, I promise. If you're out there and you're considering semen retention, don't. There are plenty of other ways to change your life day to day, and you don't need to restrict yourself on something that you enjoy if you enjoy it. And I think there's more power in being able to take responsibility for the things that you do versus avoiding the things that you want to do 
because you're afraid? But that's just me, Mr. Cum. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please click like if you had a good time or subscribe for more videos just like this every week. Make sure you tune in for my next video where I do a Mr. Beast challenge seeing how many videos I can make in five seconds. Bye. Thank you so much to my incredible supporters over on Patreon. If you want to join the Patreon, it's just $5 a month for a video thumbnail the day before it comes out and your name at the end of every video, just like this.